Okay, you guys, you know I love hip hop. And even though we're coming off the celebration of last year's the 50th anniversary of hip hop, we still got a lot more to discuss, especially when it comes to women in hip hop. And my guest today is gonna handle all of that, Nadira Simmons, right here on The Frequency. What's happening, y'all? And welcome to another episode of The Frequency. I'm your host, Dee Barnes. Now, like I was telling you, you know how much I love hip hop. And we have to talk about women in hip hop. My guest today is writer and founder of The Gumbo, a space that she created for women who love hip hop. And she's also an author of a new book, First Things First, which is all about women in hip hop and the ladies who changed the game. Yes, Nadira Simmons, welcome to The Frequency, sister. Hey, how are you? I am great, how are you? I'm doing well, I'm so excited to be here. You know there's a chapter about you in the book because you are one I of those know. ladies who changed the game, oh yes. Oh my God, I'm so honored, I'm so honored. But first, we're gonna, we're gonna back all the way up because I want the audience to know who you are because yes. your resume is incredible. Thank all you. The, I'm serious, yo, all the things that you've accomplished. And you know, I really want the audience to get to know you because one of the yeah. things I find fascinating about speaking to any guest is finding out all the little things that help um, take them on this path and their journey to where they yeah. are, right? everything that led yeah. you to writing this book. So first we got to talk yeah. about where did you grow up? What so area? I grew up, yeah, I grew up in South Jersey in a town called Burlington, right okay. outside Philadelphia. It's technically a Philadelphia suburb. I learned that a few years ago and I was like, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. So that's why I remember I went to New York and I said, 
I said water and they're like, what did you say? And they're like, where are you from? Are you from Philadelphia or South Jersey? I'm like, yeah, I definitely, wow. that's where I grew up. A lot of Philadelphia influence, but also a lot of, you know, love for Jersey and learning about house and Jersey club and all of those influences there. But yeah, South Jersey has a very big impact on me. Okay. So when did you fall in love with hip hop? I would say I, my dad always tells me that when I was like two or three years old, I was in the back of his, he had a red Nissan Altima and he would this. play imaginary players by Jay-Z. And I was really, really little. And he was wow. like, you, he's like, you knew all the words. He's like, that's probably why you talk so much now. He's like, the way you were able to pick up the words, he's like, you would just be in the back, in the car seat jamming. So I think that for me was kind of, it was always something that was a part of me. And even when I think about my upbringing, hanging out with my dad's dad, mm -hmm. he is from Philadelphia. He was so big on Philadelphia soul. He also loved hip hop. So I would be in the car with my dad listening to rap and listening to, you know, hip hop soul and all those different songs. And then I would get in the car and my grandpa would come to his house and hang out and he would be playing like the songs that sampled them. So I'm listening to a lot of Philadelphia soul artists, right. listening to Harold Melvin in the Blue Notes, listening to The Temptations, listening to Phyllis Hyman, listening to Teddy Pendergrass. And I'm able to make those connections. So I think that for me was really like, wow, I love this music. And then on top of that, you know, my uncle, he owns a barbershop in South Jersey. So being in there and hearing the hip hop debates from like right. five, six years old. My dad owned a hip hop clothing store for a while in South Jersey as well. It was named after our area code. So I would go with him sometimes to the different showrooms where he would pick out right. the different clothes from the different hip hop fashion brands. So it just kind of all connected. And I love TV. So I would watch the variety shows and Whoa, see the performances and interviews. Yeah. I got to jump in there for a minute because this, uh -huh. is, this is amazing to me because you. You named, <laughs> no, wait, no, listen, listen, you named your father your uncle, grandfather. I think that was all, these are all yeah. male. These are all men yeah. who love hip hop. Now, when you think about that and how it it's in reflected of women in hip hop and how women are treated yeah. in, in the, the misogynistic things that goes on in hip hop, mm -hmm. I find it very fascinating that all of your influence were, were men. Now, did you guys have the discussion? Did they kind of censor oh, yeah. music around you? I mean, please. Yeah. Elaborate, the elaborate. great thing. Yeah. I think the great thing. And my mom, is, she's a huge hip hop fan as well. And with her, okay, because you didn't let your like, mom. See? Yeah, you didn't let yeah. your mom at all. <laughs> we got to get, get, get all of the. Yeah, so she's from Maryland. So a lot of the go-go and the rapping over, you know, those beats and those songs, that's where I would right. get that love for that from. So all of that was connected. And I think, you know, growing up and being around my mom and dad, and if we're in the car, like I would be in the car with them and they would play a Little Kim song and right. they'd play a Foxy Brown song and they would play, you know, a lot of different things. And the one thing I always tell people this that I really appreciated about my parents and I really I know your parents are not supposed to be your best friends but my mom and dad were so instrumental in one making sure things were age appropriate for me at whatever stage right. I was in in my life but also mm -hmm. explaining things to me if things weren't cool or if they felt like something was foul or if somebody said something in a song and said hey this is inappropriate and this is why and as I got older the conversation might have opened up a little bit more to okay now I can give you a little bit more detail because I want you to still be able to enjoy your childhood and your, your youth and have context for things and you'll get more context with things as you get older. But I definitely think that, you know, when I think about the misogyny and misogynoir, like I, I have conversations with my mom and dad to this day about stuff that we'll see happen. They're like, that's dead wrong. And this is why. And I remember right. having those conversations when I was 10 and when I was seven and 15 and when I was 20, you know, so they always, mm -hmm. they always kept me in a good space to let me know, what's appropriate, what's not appropriate, the stuff that people are doing that's just dead wrong and also right. how to navigate within those spaces. Because, you know, sometimes you love something and it has those parts of it where you're like, exactly. This ain't cool, dang. And yeah, yeah. I'm really I'm really thankful for mom and dad for that. Oh, for absolutely. Keeping, I gotta give them props because yeah. I, I, I I disagree. I think your parents should be your 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 best friends. I really yes, they, yeah. I agree with that. And you know, those of us that are lucky to have that, it's a definite, mm -hmm. you can see the difference in the grounding of that person's, you know, whole structure, their whole personality. You know, I, I, had yeah. a, I was raised by a single mom, but she's my mm -hmm. best friend. And I love that. We had those conversations a lot too. And I grew up a little bit yes, in New Jersey. So I have some, some New Jersey, that was more up, uh, you know, 
Lodi, New Jersey, and uh, okay, yeah, uh, Patterson, New Jersey, which was you know okay, rough. yes, scenic New Jersey. So I, you know, I kind of okay. kind of moved around, but I was definitely, <laughs> definitely so I got that that Jersey influence. So I love when that. you were when you were going to school and and you know high school, for instance, or um, thinking about what you where you want to go to college, what were some of your influences? Like what what brought you to that stage of saying, I want to be a writer? Or did you know you wanted to be a writer? Yeah, well, I definitely think, even when I think about my dad saying, you were you were just born to talk because when I was two <laughs> years old, knowing, knowing all of the words to this Jay-Z song. But right. my mom and dad, they always, they always said that I would just be good at journalism. They were like, you love history. You love to learn. You love to share history with people. You love to talk about things. You love to engage in you know, dialogue with, right. with people about a lot of different things. So my mom and dad were very much like, you should be a journalist. Like that should be what you do. And I remember I wanted to go to Penn State, got into Penn State and a conversation that happens with, with many of us kids where your parents are like, that's a little too expensive. Like you, right. we don't know about that. Um, and I really, I, w I wanted to get out of Jersey just because I, I like, I'm, I'm so interested yeah. in seeing the world. There's so you much should. happening. There's so much right. to do. So I really wanted to get out of New Jersey, saw a few other schools in New Jersey because I knew I wasn't going to Penn State. Didn't like none of those. Kind of really didn't like the other ones that I had gotten into. And it was a week before you had like the deadline. Like yeah, you got to yeah. decide if you come in here or not. So my parents I like, know. we're going to go to Rutgers. Like, let's go see what you think. And I was like, I'm not trying to go to Rutgers. Everybody in New Jersey goes to Rutgers. Like, exactly. I don't want to go. I applied yeah, to Rutgers. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Misty. I was like, I do not want to go here. I, think but it's I got there. Or something. I think it's something in the yes. water that will make you apply. Literally. Literally. But I right. got there and I loved it. I was like, this wow. is amazing. The journalism, the uh, Sky School is what they call the School of Communication and Information. And they have the journalism and media studies major. They just had, there was so much in Rutgers in New Brunswick. It's like its own town. So mm -hmm. there's four campuses, technically five, but Cook Douglas is one. You have to take buses to your class. So like, to me, I was right. like, this is really cool. This feels like kind of what I want. I want to be close to New York City. And while I was at Rutgers, I did Rutgers radio. I also did a little bit of sports journalism. Wow. I did like VH1, Daily Show. And then I kind of got to a point where in my journalism classes, I always tell the story because I always remember it, but we were talking about, you know, how to accurately report on what's happening in the news. And I remember something that happened so frequently in this country, there was a school shooting. And mm -hmm. I just remember thinking to myself like, I can't talk about this in a way that does not allow me to express myself and express my emotions. I think, you know, th it, there's a place and it's important to be able to give the facts, but it's stuff that I feel so strongly about. I know I can't right. sit on the news and just be like, and this is what happened and this is what happened. So that for me, I was like, literally my mom and dad were like, well, you love hip hop. So why don't you, you know, think about that? And I thought about mm -hmm. it, dabbled it in a little bit as well, but I also just loved I love late night. I love TV. I grew up watching The Daily Show. Got to intern right. there uh, during Trevor Noah's first season. I know. I was, like, I was, gonna, I was like, wait a minute. I wanted to be in. Just, you kind of like, <laughs> like, like, went by. I know. Show, <laughs> Daily Show. You know, just drop Daily Show. You know what I mean? And then I know you went on to do with uh, Stephen Colbert. So first, yes. tell me about Trevor. First, tell me about Trevor Noah, The Daily Show. How that Yeah. Happened. How was that, that experience? That experience was it was great. And, and I learned this happened while you were so, in college or was it, did it yep. happen after? Oh, wow. Okay. Yep. While I was in college. So that was my very last semester. That was my last internship. And wow. yeah, I would just get up and get on the train at seven in the morning from New Brunswick, go to New York. And I think it was three days a week that I was there, but I just learned so much about when I loved writing and I saw how writing, obviously you have to write for a TV show. So yeah. I saw how the writing was so crucial for TV. I also mm -hmm. love content creation and I saw how they were doing their field pieces. And I also love interviewing people, like all the different things that I loved about right. the world. And I love from like about journalism. Mm -hmm. And obviously there's an entertainment element to it, but like, I thought that was cool and that's what I wanted to do. So right. I got to really get like a crash course and like firsthand experience really just seeing what was happening. And then when I, you, you know, you started are, at Colbert. Wait, yeah. Hold on, before you start, yeah. Stephen, how did you navigate during the writer strike? How did you navigate your career during that? Yeah, the writer strike was, strike. yeah, it wasn't, 
it was very odd because I also went to LA to work, work on the book. So I was like, I'm going to get out of the East Coast. I want to hang out here and write the book. And I kind of saw LA in its like, you know, yes. fullness and then everything immediately shut down. I think mm-hmm. thankfully I was able to kind of navigate it in a way because I had prepared myself to not work for a year while working on the book anyway. Right. And it, that timing coincided. But even when I would want to like get, you know, like a small little job here, maybe I'll do this. Like there was nothing. And a lot of my peers and a lot of my friends, it was insane, but it was also beautiful to like go outside and, you know, see people striking and seeing people like on the street coming together and to donate money. I think a lot of people and what I love, a lot of people thought they weren't going to get what they asked for or remotely close to what they asked for. And I think that's just something, even when I think about hip hop and musicians, it's like, they'll really ask for what you want. And if you stick together and you go hard and you don't let up, like you can really get there. There's power in numbers and power in community. So it was very disheartening to see. And I don't think it should have gone as long as it did right, but right, exactly. nonetheless, it was something yeah it was something that is going to have a lasting impact for a lot of writers and actors and we're seeing other guilds and other entities strike too and i think we need that we need that definitely listen we're going to take a quick break and we come back i want to talk okay. to you more about um you know the journalists right now what they're facing because there yeah. seems to be layoffs you know happening yeah. everywhere and what advice you would give to you know journalists coming up after the break right. on the frequency y'all Black Star Network is here. Oh, no punch! I'm a real uh, revolutionary right now. Uh, thank you for being the voice of Black America. All the momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? Hatred on the streets, a horrific scene, a white nationalist rally that descended into deadly violence. Oh, you will not white people are losing their damn minds. There's an angry pro Trump mob storms the U.S. Capitol. We're about to see the rise of what I call white minority resistance. We have seen white folks in this country who simply cannot tolerate black folks voting. I think what we're seeing is the inevitable result of violent denial. This is part of American history. Every time that people of color have made progress, whether real or symbolic, there has been what Carol Anderson at Emory University calls white rage as a backlash. This is the rise of the Proud Boys and the Boogaloo Boys. America, there's going to be more of this. Here's all the Proud Boys, guys. This country is getting increasingly racist in its behaviors and its attitudes because of the fear of white people. The fear that they're taking our jobs, they're taking our resources, they're taking our women. This is white fear. Welcome back to The Frequency. I'm your host, Dee Barnes, and my guest, Nadira Simmons. Please join me, writer, digital content creator, journalist, author. I love it. I love having you intro. It sounds great. I love it. I love it. I mean, because it's all true. Right off after the break, um, or right before the break, excuse me, we were talking about how journalists are facing all of these challenges right now with you know, coming off the writer strike. We just had like a couple of months of, of, of you know, stability and now yeah. it's like happening. What do you, what do you, what are your thoughts on what's happening in the journalism community? I think it is so, it's so disheartening and it's also very scary. Right. I remember when I kind of decided I didn't really want to do journalism full time. And one of the things that inspired me to start the gumbo is because, you know, I was seeing a lot of my friends at, you know, in college and in school and, you know, they're great journalists, not just because they're my friends, but they're great journalists, they're great writers, they're great at interviews and they're not getting 
jobs. And if they are getting jobs, particularly the black women, they weren't getting paid. So I'm like, why are you, how are you doing a job? And then, you know, you're not getting paid. I don't believe in that. I'm like, that's not cool. Like we're not paying nobody. So that really was what inspired me to start the gumbo. I saved a year of my late show checks to kind of make that a reality and really keep some sort of, you know, writing and, and journalism afloat. But I think, I don't know what these companies are thinking in their heads. Right. I'm sure it's a money play and I'm sure they want to, just like we saw a few years ago, we want to pivot to digital. We want to do podcasts. We want to do this, but journalism is so, so, so important. Mm-hmm. And to lose the ability for someone to go somewhere and read about what's happening. And I always think about accessibility. So I'm like, if somebody can't listen to a podcast or watch a show or consume media in a certain way, Right. How are they going to be able to learn about something? I just and I also feel like there's a lot of money out here. So y'all like they have the money to keep these entities afloat. They're just choosing not to. And, you know, they want to move into a different direction. But to see yeah. like Pitchfork get absorbed by I a bigger know. entity, to see Sports Illustrated just be completely like like you're laying off the whole staff. And it's been yeah. it's been happening for a very long time. But I feel like in the past year, like every time I open my Twitter or open my Instagram or LinkedIn, I'm seeing, hey, y'all, here's my email. I was just laid off. You know, let me know. Right. I think the L.A. Times just laid off a bunch of people yesterday. too. Yeah, they had a walk like, out. It yep. is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like it is really it is really, really disheartening. Frustrating. Yeah. And, and it really made me to realize that um, you also have to have multiple ways to have income, especially as a journalist, you have to have those. Different yeah. Platforms. And speaking of platforms, I want to first yeah. start off and say thank you for creating that space. The space that I'm talking oh, about is the gumbo. So um, we're going to have your the net gumbo dot net up on the screen. But basically Ooh. the gumbo, you you created this, you founded it and you're maintaining it and created it. Uh, like a safe space for, you know, uh, for and black, for black women to, you know, who love hip hop. And also, like you said, Mm -hmm. as a networking um, platform for other journalists, women journalists to, you know, maybe get their work out there. Right. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. And And so you said, you mentioned like you, saved your late night checks for this can you kind of whiz by that too so after, <laughs> yeah. after the daily show you went on to the late show with stephen colbert yes unbelievable, <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> i know it's really crazy I gotta, you your flowers. I gotta give you your props i mean i, mean, I don't you. know if you've been getting them but i'm giving them to you today so thank please. you so you're welcome tell me about that tell me about that experience because you know yeah you know, working on the late night show this is it's interesting. Yes, it was. It, honestly, the way it happened was so crazy. I feel like I was applying for jobs all summer. And this is something I always tell everyone I meet, especially like interns or younger people, like no matter what you do, do that job as like to the best of your ability. Do it, exactly. do it amazingly. And at, at the Daily Show on Wednesdays, I think was my day. I was in the control room and the control room intern has to make really, really, really like they have to make fruit plates. And I was like, when I go pick up my fruit and make the fruit plate for the crew, it's going to be the best fruit plate plate they've ever seen. When I sharpen Mm -hmm. these pencils, they're going to be the sharpest pencils. And I just wanted to do everything amazingly. So by the time I uh, applied for, it was an apprenticeship program at the Late Show, a year long program. By the time I applied for that, I got on camera to do my interview and they had already heard about me from one of, I think she's the executive producer, Jen at the daily show. And immediately after that call, I got the position. So for a year there, I kind of got to bounce around through different departments and learn about the talent department and, you know, learn a little bit about digital and digital was really where I was like, this is great. I get to write and I get to work with Steven really closely and I get to work with all the guests really closely. I get to create content um, I get to be downstairs and, you know, get, you know, I get the Instagram stories. I get to do a lot of different things. And I think they're just being there, especially you're working around all these people who are like <laughs> legends, not just mm-hmm. in the late night game, but the TV game period. Right. They're also, you know, older. They've been around. They have so much under their belt. And the one thing I always say is I'm so grateful for everyone there is because they really they taught me so much mm-hmm. and they were always down whether I like wanted to go to like 
one of the writers like, hey, I have a question about a bit. They're like, okay, like come up here after lunch. Or if I had a question wow. for Steven, hey, come in at, right after my meeting. Like everyone was just so amazing there and right. so great. And I think that helped me, even though I wasn't really writing at that time, that helped me want to create a space where one, I could be a good leader, just like the leaders that I'm around. Two, I'm giving people the space to really grow because I grew there from an apprentice, which was a year long program to literally staying and then leaving as a producer in the social right. media and digital department as social producer. So really getting the opportunity to just grow and be great. Mm -hmm. I know that, you know, late night is, is, is hard. There's a lot happening. It's long, long days, especially when we would do those live shows during election time, like it is long hours and hard work and just getting to be there and experience that and learn from them and getting to network and meet people. Like, why am I in a room with Robert De Niro? Like, this is crazy. I'm right, producing right. a bit of Issa Rae. Like, okay, cool. Like just I the trust it. that they had in me as a young black woman, that is something that I will never forget. And I'm so grateful for it. And I'm sure pe people see me, I sing their praises all the time, but I love all of them. There's so many names to name that I don't want to name any because I yeah, know I might forget somebody, but uh -huh. yes, yeah, shout out to all of them and Steven. This is what I'm talking about. Like all of these things that happen in your life that brought you to this point. And this is your first book that you wrote, right? Yes. Yeah. Your first book, and it's called First Things First. Yes. Congratulations. It's coming out Thank on the 30th. You. Right? The 30th. Yeah. Yep. Right. Oh, yes. <laughs> Here we go. Hip hop ladies that changed the game. Let's get into yeah. this. Let's yes. get into this. First of all, the cover is excellent. Who did the art? Thank work? you. So Monet Alyssa, I think is how I pronounce it. Monet Alyssa or Alisa, but follow her on Instagram, Monet underscore Alyssa. She is amazing. And my team kind of had like a whole Rolodex of artists. And, you know, I was like, all right, let's find a black woman. Like, which ones are black ones? Let's pick them out. And, you right. know, they sent me like her website. We went through everything. And I was just like, this is great. This is really just like the design and the vibe that I want to capture. I want it to be fun. I want it to be exciting. I want it to be I colorful. It. I want it to pop out. So yeah, so shout out to Monet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's get into the book now. Yeah. What inspired you to take on this particular subject? I mean, not just women in hip hop, but right to address all of the women, the history of it, because I feel like, um, especially during the celebration last year, like a lot of the <laughs> history mm -hmm. of women were were not highlighted as much. You know, yeah. there was a lot, there was a lot of inclusion, but it just wasn't it wasn't enough. I agree. I yeah. want you to speak more than more than me yeah. about it. <laughs> Go ahead. Talk talk to me about this book. Yeah. I definitely I feel like there are first of all, there's so much more to do and, and to be done. And I want everyone watching and listening to this to know that we can do a hip hop 51, 52, 53, 54, right. 55. Right. Like we can do we can do something every year. But I think for me, with the book first things first and kind of taking this idea of first and not to really put it as hey this person is the best or the greatest because i think sometimes when we think about someone being the first they're like oh well forget everyone else that came after them no i really wanted to show people for example with your chapter when we think about the ways in which women are able to host shows and interview artists and to have a space and to have a platform mm -hmm. a lot of people are watching older episodes of pump it up and that foundation was laid from you being the first woman to do that on, on broadcast right. television. So I think just thinking about all of the foundation, the foundations and all of the legacies and a lot of times how much we do not know, even, you know, mm -hmm. I'm from South Jersey. So I listen to Philadelphia radio. Lady B is like the right. voice outside of my mom and dad. I probably heard her just as much as I heard my exactly. parents' voices. And she's one of the first women to record a rap song. So when mm -hmm. I think about stuff like that and just her legacy, and now she's a radio titan, a lot of people aren't able to make those connections, one, because they don't have the knowledge or, you know, because no one has told them about it. And I just, exactly. and I've said this a lot too, as I've, you know, talked to people about the book is, as a black woman in America, like sometimes it's hard for me to figure out where I come from. It's hard for me to figure out what, you know, my family history and my ancestors or, you know, whatever it is I want to know because things weren't documented, things weren't recorded, or people were just like, oh, we don't need to record nothing about them, right. we don't care. And I think, not even I think that happens so often within hip hop, especially when it comes to mm -hmm. black women in hip hop is things aren't being recorded. And if a woman didn't, you know, lay down a track, then 
should she be forgotten? No, especially because right. so many of these women are still here and still alive. Like, let's really make exactly. sure we are highlighting, highlighting them. And I really wanted to do that with this book. It's just kind of set the foundation for when you think about film, when you think about TV, when you think about journalism, when you think about the music, when you think about the Grammys, when you think about all these things, I want y'all to know the foundation for what right. we have today. Okay, well, hold that thought right there. We're going to take a quick yeah. break. And come back, we're going to start breaking down the chapters and getting more into the book because this is exciting. Ooh, right back frequency, thank y'all. you. talk about blackness and what happens in black culture we're about covering these things that matter to us uh, speaking to our issues and concerns this is a genuine people power movement a lot of stuff that we're not getting you get it and you spread the word we wish to plead our own cause to long have others spoken for us we cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it this is about uh, covering us invest in black owned media your dollars matter we don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff so please support us in what we do folks we want to hit 2,000 people $50 this month raise $100,000 we're behind 100000 so we want to hit that y'all money makes this possible checks and money orders go to P.O. Box 57196 Washington DC 20037 dash 0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zell is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. Black Star Network is here. Oh, no punch! I'm a real uh, revolutionary right now. I thank you for being the voice of Black America. All the momentum we have now. We have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, there's a difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? Back right here on The Frequency, I'm your host, Dee Barnes, and my special guest, author and founder of The Gumbo, Nadira Simmons. Please join me. We were just getting into your book, First Things First. And I want to say, first of all, thank you for writing this. Um, I find it crazy that it's your generation that's really documenting our history. Mm. Um, when When you think about it, it could have been, you know, the women that actually are doing the work, but mm-hmm. we're so busy. And when I say we, I'm, I'm part of that crew. <laughs> so busy trying to preserve our legacy, yes, or even let it let it be known that there is some type of legacy that mm-hmm. we're not even thinking past that. Well, you know, I might as well document the history. There's only one in particular that I can think of right now that's actually working on that, and that is MCWD. Yeah, uh, yes. <laughs> she does not play. She, she, like does not play. she is in one of my favorites, um, one of my yes. mentors. Um, oh, I, love I love her that. and respect her so much. And when I got the opportunity to meet her, it was like a big deal for me because mm. a lot of people look at hip hop and they only see the generation, and which is my generation of, you know, the mm-hmm. Salt Peppers, MC Lights, the Moni Love, yeah. the Tifas. Um, the JJ Fads, the Oaktown 357s, they only see that, but they don't they don't think about the generation that came before, except they always mention yeah. Shantae. Yep. They don't talk about, you know, MC Shyrock. They don't talk about uh-huh. the Lisa Lee, Debbie D, Lady B, yep. the children, you know what I mean? Yeah. Pebbly Poo, um, the yeah. Mercedes ladies, all ladies, these, yes. All of these women. And one of the things too, um, I wanted to say that. Sometimes too, when you're when you're the first, there's so many challenges and uh, roadblocks and things that happen, you know, because you're you're navigating this territory for the first time by yourself. There might not have been someone else that you can follow in their footsteps. For me, a big influence, right? Um, for me, was downtown Julie Brown. Yes, she yes. she's mentioned in the book. Yes, yes. and I, I'm I'm so happy about that. And I would watch her and see how 
carefree she was and just like so mm -hmm. comfortable in her skin so cozy yes. you, know, it, yes. it inspired, you know what i'm saying it inspired yeah. me to feel that way too about doing that show for the first time because i didn't have a woman that i could look to besides her right um, that was you know focused on hip-hop so i now we have to get yeah. into you know what you were saying yeah. about pointing out all of these different women in different meetings so let's break up let's break let's see the yeah. book again um can you we can see the book again this let's yes. break down some of the chapters please yes go ahead so we go oh my gosh and i have it right in front of me just yeah, because yeah, pull I, have, pull I'm hard copy I'm getting, i love it i love it <laughs> yeah i know i gotta make sure one gets That's you right, so I'm we it. we start the book with the beginning so we go from cindy campbell to Min millie jackson to the mm -hmm. first rap records that were recorded the ladies mentioned who cindy, you mentioned cindy but go ahead and explain to the yes audience. um cindy campbell planned and promoted that first official hip-hop party i say official because you know, there's a lot of discussion around, well, hip hop right. was prior to 1973. And yes, people did rap before that and a, a whole lot of stuff. Yes. But when we celebrate that anniversary, we go to 1973, we go to August, we go to that party. So I wanted mm -hmm. to highlight Cindy. She's been getting a lot more love and people are really Lately. knowing about the story now. Yes, which I think yes. is amazing. But I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to write this book and not kick it off with her and document I love her that you did that because anyway. that's one of my things yeah. that I say all the time, too. We talk about, you know, DJ Cool Herc. You know, um, yeah, much to him, but we never we you know, his sister. <laughs> yep, <laughs> exactly. The title. So I love that. Go yeah. ahead. I love that you broke yeah. it down. Yeah, yeah. So we go from light to MC Trouble. We do interludes, which the interludes are some of my wow. favorite parts of the MC book. Trouble. <laughs> God, yes, you're gonna make me. I watched a video. That's my little yes, sister. that's my little sis. We were. We were so cool that, you know, losing her was just devastating. One of the yeah. you know, earlier ones of women that we lost in hip hop. Right. Um, I was thinking yeah. of Miss Melody too. Yes. Her too. Mm -hmm. Like those were the two big ones that we lost early in, 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 in hip hop. Yeah. And her Same chapter thing. was sad one to write. And I watched okay. a lot of footage of y'all two together too, which just yeah. made me very happy. Yeah. So definitely shout out to her. I'm so glad. Um, so, yeah, so we go to Courtney Sloan. Courtney Sloan's an interior designer. I'm not sure if a lot of people know about her, but I discovered her through research. And she designed the Vibe offices. She designed a lot mm -hmm. of offices for music execs. She went to Rutgers, and I was like, this is really cool. And a person that you probably wouldn't know about. She also designed Queen Latifah's first home once Queen Latifah got her crib. She was like, I want you. I used to come to your showroom in Jersey City wow. to hook me up, make my friends. So I was like, this is a cool person. Like, I'm going to put Where her in you? here. Yes, yeah, so we talk about Wild Style, the ladies in and around that first hip hop movie. My one of my favorite chapters, the next one is Roxanne Shante. I know she's the subject of the first widely released biopic about a woman rapper, but then I use the second half of the chapter to talk about all the other women rappers that we need biopics on. Now, obviously, right. I could have written that for days, so there are still more, but I highlight the Mercedes ladies, a lot of the women we just talked about, and mm -hmm. just trying to get their stories out there. So you're you're right after that, chapter ten, D Barnes. Oh, yeah, yeah, to, it's so surreal yeah. to be talking to you about <laughs> and, and like thinking about me and in a book and I really want to thank you too for highlighting um it changes the narrative you know what I mean yes. of having yep. that you talking about the show as opposed to talking about the incident because everyone wants to bring yep. up the incident and they forget about yep. you know, the history of the show and I exactly. and that's so unfortunate and I think that's something that happens to women a lot so thank you for like yeah. correcting it and for sure. it, out there. it was the first broadcast um hip hop show yeah network uh station it was an early show um mm -hmm. an early network with fox you know this is back in the days before like right before living color came yes. out yes on that fox lot i used to finish pump it up and then run to you know the living color set and hang out with wow rosie. Yeah, and, you know oh she's in the book too yes yes and rosie she she should be in there um you know yes. and I'm, on the set and watch the fly girls get down and you know the djs and have the guests on it was even sometimes too some of the guests crossed from pump it up over to in living color performing so it was like perfect yeah you know what I mean? so come on, I just felt, yeah and even just for you just thinking about you and there are other chapters where you know there are certain things to address but i'm like i'm not gonna leave miss d's chapter with it like she has done 
so much and your history yeah. and your work is so important. And I wanted that to be, this is what we are talking Thank about. You. I am so yeah. honored. So, I'm so honored. Yes. I mean, there is so many women in there. Please name, name some more. I know that. Yes. Um, so we have uh, Big Les after that. Then we have Heather yeah. B, Sophie Bramley, Queen Latifah, Megan Thee Stallion, Eve, April Walker, Lil' Kim, Misa Hilton, ESG, Mary J. Blige, Missy Elliott, Gangsta Boo, Trina, Ooh. Nicki Minaj, Danielle Smith, Honey Magazine. I talked to the founders of Honey Magazine. Oh, I, I, love love I still have a yes. couple of my Honey Magazine. Yes. Oh. Missy, I would like to see some of yeah, yeah, I will share some with you for sure. Go ahead. Yes. You just, you're just um, really taking me there. Like, yes. Like, in it. This I is love so it. Then we have Angie Martinez, Foxy Brown, Salt and Pepper, DeBrat, Miss Lauren Hill, and Cardi B. And I just want to say, in the middle of all of these chapters, um, there are games. There are also different asides where I mention different women. So at the end of the Big List chapter, I do a whole breakdown of all of the uh, Black women hip hop choreographers that you should know. So there are there are a whole bunch of names in there that even if you don't see them in a chapter, mm -hmm. just read the book. Like they they are definitely Mia X. There are so many people in there. What are the game? What's the game you're talking about? So there are uh, how many games? I think so there are, are we gonna get cards? Here. We need to get cards now, like from your book. I, I know I thought I about that. that. Right? Yeah. Okay, that's, okay. That, that's on my list of things after I uh, after we get thirtieth out the way. But I wanted to do. I think one of the things I struggled with a lot with the book was trying to get every single detail in there. And I told mm -hmm. so many people this. I'm like, yo, like my editor, he really calmed me down because when you're documenting the history, sometimes you feel like I got to get everything and I got to be as up to date and my editor was like nadira at some point you are gonna turn in the manuscript which i turned in in july of last year <laughs> right. and he was like and something is something could happen the day after and he was like news can break records could be broken things could be said about a certain person he was like and you have to be comfortable with that and you got to be able to just live with that and create the thing so once i was able to get to that point i felt like i was able to just like write and be free flowing and then also kind of get the information in there that did you, you do know, all the research really yourself important. did you do all the research yes. yourself? wow yes so journalist skills coming in yes yes and that was oh that was a lot i was in the library every day for like the first six months what was your goal with the book what what, what was the the whole reason you wanted to do it I wanted there to be a place where someone could have an archive of information. And I think a lot of those exist. I'm just a big fan of having different ways to access information. So, okay, mm -hmm. you can go on the gumbo, you can go online, but even though everyone, a lot of people have smartphones today, iPhones today, I don't know if everybody has the ability to right. go online and access that. Um, library cards are relatively easy to get. So, hey, maybe you can go to your local library and check out First Things First to read. I just wanted there, especially when I think about Hip Hop 50 and, you know, I was writing the book during, the second half of the book I was writing during um, Hip Hop 50 and just seeing a lot of the celebrations and discussions and the talks. And I'm like, yo, like this is, one, the things that are happening there are great. Of course, I feel like there could be more, but I'm like, what happens when I leave this event? Where can I go get this information? Right. Where can I find this? And I, I just wanted there, I wanted to to contribute, not necessarily to Hip Hop 50 because the book's not coming out during Hip Hop 50, right, but right. I wanted there to be a place where, hey, if you don't know about a Sophie Bramley and how she had Yo! MTV raps prior to it being a thing over here in the United States of America, I would like you to know that if you're not familiar with a Courtney Sloan, I think that that is very interesting. And hey, there's so many ways and realms that hip hop touches. This is an interior designer and a woman who makes furniture and she is so right. big in hip hop that she's doing all those different things. I guess that's the other thing too, is I wanted it to inspire. I wanted people to feel like, cause I love hip hop. I'm a TV girl, you know, I'm yes. not really in the journalism space in the same way, but I want to show I wanted to show people that not only has hip hop touched so many different realms, but there are so many different women who are responsible exactly. for hip hop being in these different realms and different spaces. Mm -hmm. So that was the big thing. And then even when I think about the Big Les chapter at the end, because Big Les has done so much. And at one yes. point her chapter was so long. I was like, Nadira, this is I wrote twenty thousand more got words than I was supposed CBS, to. Uh like type receipts for her her. Yeah. Her she, her it. resume is so long. So I decided to do a crossword puzzle at the end of her chapter. Nice. And instead of me giving you so much more, because you've already read a lot. Okay, now I'll try to fill this in and learn. Because I also, 
so many, like I said, my hip hop memories in the car with my dad or like in the car with my mom or at home with my mom, she's putting a CD in. I, I can attach them to moments. So if you're feeling a crossword puzzle and you see that Rap City now fills in a box, you're going to remember Rap City and Big Liz right. in a different way than maybe if you were reading, you know, a long paragraph. So there mm -hmm. are games in there that are really fun. You know what? I think it's so important to, to have this documented this history documented because um there are a lot of women in hip-hop now this generation the younger generation who don't know whose shoulders they're standing on no exactly you know what i mean and i you know no mm -hmm. disrespect but they don't know yeah. the of the genre that they're in you know what i mean nope. and it's like yeah. that's mind-boggling to me like how do you not know who came before you you know what i mean yeah um, and i think that's important you got to know you know you should you gotta know so that you can navigate your way through this career. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? This, this culture, and that's another thing yeah. too. We cite that it is a culture. It's not just yes. Culture. You know, uh -huh. that's why I love that you covered. You know, the break dancers. You've covered. You know, the yeah. choreographers. You covered. You know, the people that do the interior design. Like these are things I didn't think about. <laughs> Photographers. I'm I'm big yeah. on photography, and I um yeah women uh photographers that i covered that you know they covered hip-hop and they took like the right. iconic photos that you see and no one knows their names you know what i mean yeah so i love that we have this reference now i think it's important yeah. and um it's something also that can uh translate into schools too yes you know I mean? yeah I mean. and i love the idea <laughs> yeah right and i love the idea <laughs> that, you know also with the game you know the cards and just the knowledge. I think it's important to have this history documented. And I think it's yeah. even more critical when it's, you know, women documenting women. I think yeah. it's yeah. So thank you, thank you for your work. I mean, thank you. So I mean, I'm excited. I mean, you have all of these <laughs> chapters in there. And you when did you start the project? So I started it July of 2022. So it was a full year. What inspired yep. you? What, what made you go, I'm going to, this is what I want to do. Like, I'm going to do a write it about this. Yeah. I and know, I I had I this one like catalyst. Cause I know, you know, the history. I mean, you have the, the website, the gumbo, which is like yeah. a safe space for us to go, you know, and talk yeah. about it. But what was the catalyst? I said, you know what? I'm going to document this. I really feel like the catalyst for me is kind of in line with the gumbo. Mm -hmm. It's just and that and also just being on social media and just seeing people post things that just that aren't correct or don't have the full correct. information. Yeah. And I'm like, this person actually wasn't the first person to do it. And like this person right. did not create this. So I definitely wanted to contribute to that overall. See, that's perfect. OK, all right. We're going to take a quick break and we come back. We're going to talk about what's in the future for you and, you know, what's next? What's the next book? Yes. Frequency, y'all. I'm Jebra Owens, America's Wealth Coach, and my new show, Get Wealthy, focuses on the things that your financial advisor and bank isn't telling you, but you absolutely need to know. So watch Get Wealthy on the Black Star Network. Black Star Network is this is a real uh, revolutionary right now. I thank you for being the voice of Black America. All the momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, you're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause 
too long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Check some money orders. Go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037 dash 0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. Back right here in the frequency with my guest Nadira Simmons, author hey. okay, of the new book, First Things First. Hip hop ladies yes. that changed the game. I absolutely love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I can't, you. Can't thank you enough for the work that you've done, especially creating, you. you know, the gumbo, that safe space thank for you. women who love hip hop. You know what I mean? Because yes. there's plenty of discussions online about it. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, just you creating a space now when the book, when is the book release again on the 30th, right? January, January 30th. I can't believe it's about to be, <laughs> about to be about to where can we order the book? Like where, where you, you can order the book, wherever you get your books. Um, mm -hmm. you can support, support your local independent bookstore. So if there's a bookstore you really like, please go there and support them because I love a good indie. I love a good black owned bookstore, right. um, but any, any, anywhere you get your books, anywhere you previously purchased books, they have it. I love it. I can't wait to get my my actual hard copy and thank you so yes. much for including me in there. It's just so of like so humble that it just makes me like I'm blushing and laughing and thinking about it. But you know what? <laughs> you, know you had to be in there. Yeah. You see, yes, you did that. You see Nash? Yes. When she, I'm like, you know what? You go, girl. You did that. Yes, <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Uh, and I think it's so important for us women to to document our history. I mean, it, it would take your your generation. Like I'm telling you, like a lot of these books that are coming out, a lot of things that's being documented. Yeah, I love from, that. From you know the women that grew up in the music. What are you yeah. listening to right now? Oh my gosh. I feel like I listen to so much old stuff. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I get, yeah. I, I mean, obviously I listen to any new Lotto, new Meg, new Cardi, new, like new Nick, anybody, anybody right. that's coming out. I listen to, to the new music, but I just always, I, I love Lil' Kim. She's one of my goats. I always go back to, to streaming her. Um, right, right. I love Missy. I think Missy is so Me too. amazing. Iconic. I, I always listen to so her. I was so happy she, you know, got inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yes. It was so amazing to see. And um, so recently, amazing. Queen Latifah just got the Kennedy honors. I mean. Yes. Like, it's amazing. I love, seeing, I love seeing women in hip hop uh, get the respect, get their flowers, Get their yeah. jobs, because it seemed like it's taken so long, you know, just for us to get that very long. You know what I mean? Very, very long. Just yeah. for us to get that recognition. So I'm I'm happy whenever it happens. And I love seeing black women Damn. like you, you know, platform you. that this is I wish you nothing but success. I'm thank so, you so much. I'm so excited, you know, next it'll be, you know, the doctor. <laughs> Series, uh, first that's thing. what we're trying to do. <laughs> first, it'll be the docuseries first thing first, because you know, yes. we should celebrate this, it should be celebrated. And, and there's a couple of people in there too that I'm ashamed. Like, I was like, Oh, I didn't know about that, I didn't know about that. So, I think it's definitely something that's you know, we need it, we need yeah. it, yeah, that space. You feel that space for well, it. That means a lot coming from you because you are the goat to me, you know, so oh, much, yeah. you've done so much, you've contributed so much. So if you say it's good, I'm like, we, Yo, we good. <laughs> it's good y'all and y'all better order it. You know what I'm saying? And we got to be talking about it on the gumbo. I'm going to be all up in the yes. <laughs> it for sure. So I will what's, be there. Next? what's next for you? I would like to take a nice little vacation, honestly. I'm like, yo, <laughs> you, can't, you can't take a vacation. Yeah. No such thing. I mean, 
I know. I'm like just a nice little week away to go to the spa. So I w- I'm going to plan to do that. And then, like you said, I do want to turn it into a docu series. I would nice. love. I, I'm again. I'm just such a big fan of having things in so many different mediums. I want mm-hmm. someone to be able to listen to the book. You have the audio book. You can read the hard the hardcover book. You can get the ebook. And now, okay, someone who might not have had all those things or even known that this existed might right. be able to watch this online or on TV. So. That's kind of the next phase. And I also want to do a book on the intersection between hip hop and television. That's, oh, those are my right. two favorite things. It's something that I just love so much. And oh, I love that so idea. Because I think, about, I think about the influence that, you know, television and hip hop had on me. Like I remember, and mostly for me too, it was music videos. Cause I came up in that. Yes. So I remember we had like, I don't know if you remember Friday night videos. No. There was a show called Friday Night Videos, and it used to be hosted by um, Jesse and Angie from uh, oh. All My Children. Were they on All My Children? Remember? Do you remember? You probably this is probably yeah. over I know All My Children. <laughs> Back in the day, you know. So Jesse, they were the black couple on on um, mm-hmm. All My Children, and they hosted videos like late night Friday night videos. You know what I mean? And wow. Then fast forward to. Um, Graffiti rock. Remember yes, now that I know. Yes, and yes. Things, things had like big, big influences on me. I would yeah. love. It. I told you earlier, you know, downtown Julie Brown. So definitely like yep. music video. So I would love to see how you yeah relate the hip hop with television because I can't even. Yeah. And, you know, I remember like when the first commercials were on, they were terrible. <laughs> terrible commercials that they used to have. Remember, like the Pillsbury Doughboy would rap. Yes, I was rap. young for this, but I remember, and I know my generation remembers. This is like, what? Yeah, like, what is happening? But, yeah, but that was like how they were like trying to, you know, trying to the mainstream of yeah. commercials. I remember there uh, back in the day too was all these commercials with like break dancers in it and things like that. So I would mm-hmm. love to see you writing. With yeah. Them you know, hip hop and uh, television. That's going to be great. Yeah. And then hip hop and movies too. Even though you touched the thing. It, yeah. Right? You touched so on it in the book too. Yeah. But there's, there's a lot. Yeah. I really, I feel like there's so many more movies we need. There's so many that have been made. But I, even I, when I think about a Queen Latifah, like for me, I listened to her, thankfully, because I had, you know, my mom listening to me on TV. I had right. my dad listening to her. But when I would get my hair done on Sundays, my mom and I would sit. That's one of, like, my, my other biggest childhood memories. She'd be doing my hair. We'd be watching Living Single. So Queen Latifah, oh, for yes. me, initially was the actress. I knew she rapped, but when I was consuming her, she was Khadijah. Right. You know, and then she's in these all these movies that I'm going to see. So I think that... Um, just thinking about all of that and then working in late night and knowing the impact that Arsenio has had and, mm-hmm. you know, why we have the performances in the way. I just feel like there's so much there, which also lets me know right. that, would take a, that book's going to take a while. <laughs> a lot mm-hmm. of research, a lot of interviews, but I just think that it would be really, really necessary because, right. again, to that point of impact, people have done a lot. It's so funny that you said about late night, too, because initially had I... You know, I always consider myself girl interrupted when I was working. Mm. Um, yeah. But my, my goal was to take that, pump it, pump it up and turn uh. it into a late night show. I wanted to be that that woman on television late night. That was my goal. And then also I, I wanted um, the like the first hip hop awards. Like I was trying yes. to, this is prior to, you know, prior to, I think the Source Awards or maybe right around. Right, yeah. But I wanted, like, you know, pump it up to do like an award show, and I had all I have yes. like, all of these different ideas, and they were just like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like, okay, okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe, you know? you. So, yeah. these are things that I wanted to do. So yeah, I can I can see where you're going with the book, and I think it's going to be excellent. Ah, oh, thank I you. I will hit you up when it ha- when it's time because yes, you I'm you down, got a lot. Yes, however I can support, I'm there. I'm there for you. Thank sister. you. And same, same to you, because, you know, I want the pump it up doc book, whatever oh. moment. I said that in the book. I was like, whenever she does it, I'll be first in line. <laughs> it's been a challenge, you know, I, I was, I don't know what made me do it, but I did document a lot of pump it up. 
I documented Good. it for yeah. years when I was there. Just, you know, someone was holding the camera and they've got me, f- you know, filming. And I, I have that. like over 100 tapes. Yeah. And, you know, I've been pushing this documentary, pushing documentary, but it seems that I have to find balance between, you know, even though I feel like the documentary Pump It Up could stand on its own, everybody yes. wants the whole, you know, they want the whole oh, pie. Oh, they want to do. Yeah, mm. they want the whole pie, not a slice. And I'm like, but this is, this is more. <laughs> but that's important. a pie too, yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's more important than, you know, this is like, it's, that's just a chapter that happened where this is the whole right. book. You know, yeah. but I, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. So I definitely want to pull. We'll get there. it done. Yeah. yeah, it's gonna get done. It's gonna get done. Yeah. Oh, thank you uh-huh. sister, for coming on. I want to. I just want to give you your your virtual flowers. Thank and, you. you know, tell you how much I appreciate the work that you're doing, and thank you so for creating much. this this book and this safe space for us. The gumbo, you guys. You know, yeah. log on to the gumbo. Okay, get in. Get in there. Get in those comments and um, <laughs> really pick up the book. First things first. I love it. I'm loving this cover. Yes. My Thank mind, you. My hard copy. I want it autographed from you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm literally, look, I'm going to hit you up after because I got a whole bunch in front of me. That's what my laptop is balanced on too. So I'm going to sign right, I know, one. I know, one I know. I, mine is on a book too. So definitely. Well, thank you. Thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you for the work. And I wish you continued success. And you definitely got to come back on to the frequency. I'm so update down. Us, update us on what, you know, what the new segment will be. Okay. Yeah. And thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And again, yes. thank you for all that you, you've you done and continue to do. And congratulations on the frequency. This is amazing. Thank you, thank you so much. Hold up that book one more time, please, so we can see that. Yes. 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 First yeah, thing first. Yes. Okay. Yes. First oh, thing first. Like, Let's get it. Let's yes. get it. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank right. you. Appreciate you. Okay. We out. Woo, hip hop. I love it. You know, I do. And I want to give a special shout out to Nadira Simmons for, you know, writing that book, First Things First, and just coming on and talking about hip hop with us. And now um, when we, when she gets to the next level, we're going to have her back and we're going to talk more and, you know, keep it going. Thank you for tuning in on The Frequency, Black Star Network.